Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things skincare, so if that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not going to see here on YouTube. Welcome to the third instalment of Instagram versus reality, where I like to put my editorial and advertising degree to some use. Let's get straight into it. We've been talking a lot about the app Snow. This is a real-time filtering app. It's not the only one out there, there are quite a few, but I need to start this video with this app. In the last video, Video, I discussed that I couldn't really find a good body filtering app. One of high enough quality that could really just concentrate on certain areas of the body, slim them down, reshape them. However, this app was mentioned in the comments section quite a few times. This unreleased app was created by Chinese app developers since time, and this app allows you to alter your body shape in real time. But not only that, it allows you to do this without disrupting the background. This is the promotional video for the unreleased app and as you can see you could elongate your legs, you could slim down your body, you can enhance your breast size, all in real time with barely, barely disrupting the background. I think you can see like a little bit of something going on, but at first glance, this is not as obvious as your usual bendy backgrounds, bendy gates, bendy walls, bendy door frames. This technology is already widely used in China when it comes to streamers, like professional streamers. We all know the story about the streamer whose um, real-time face filter glitched and she lost loads of followers overnight. But yes, it's just not been perfected to the body at the moment. So as I mentioned, this is to be released probably this year. Year. And even though it doesn't show any kind of um, background glitches, I do think that anybody with a, an average sense of proper body proportions will take a look at these kind of enhancements and realize that something's not going on. Kind of gives the image that uncanny valley feel where it looks like something we should know but there's something wrong with it. Like the leg proportions don't look right. The app is yet unnamed, but let's try and keep an eye out for this one and give it a test drive when it does come out. Leading on from that, I wanna move away from social media really quick. I've been getting a lot of questions about film and TV, which I know a little bit about, but I also wanna talk about music videos because I feel like after social media, they are some of the main things that um, the younger generation is watching here on YouTube. This kind of body slimming technology has been around in movies before, and in uh, music videos, it's called beauty work. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but let's have a look at Megan Trainer's music video for Me Too. This music video is a perfect example of beauty work being done on the body, but ever so subtly. The video editors here have kind of hinged in her waist, just making her appear slimmer in that one place and giving her that kind of like hourglass figure. I think we all know the story. She's all about body positivity. And she actually said that she cried when she saw this music video. The edited version was taken down down and the unretouched version was put up instead. The problem with these little tweaks and little changes is that they are so, so subtle, but it is those little subtle details that can make such a huge difference. They also did it in Little Mix's video. Again, probably not the best idea because they got horizontal lines going in the background and you can see you can see like everything wobbling around. Little Mix perform live so often that we know what their real bodies look like and they are all absolutely stunning, incredible, healthy looking girls and none of them, and none of them, including Megan Trainer, needs anything like that done. And that's one thing I think like a lot of people do now is beauty work is just kind of like included in the package, if that makes sense. Like along with color correction, it just seems to be like, oh, and then we'll go on to beauty work, which doesn't always have to be done. I get color correction, I get lighting correction because it just makes everything appear more vibrant. Color correction can make tones truer to real life than what the camera just picked up. But beauty work, I feel, is quite unnecessary. This is something that they do in movies and they usually have a huge budget for beauty work, especially when it comes to the more popular actors and actresses. We just call them all actors now, right? We call them actors. One of the programs that was used for beauty work and has kind of been replicated with other companies nowadays was originally used in their film Benjamin Button to make Brad Pitt look older and younger and have all those flashback scenes where he looks like his younger self. No, it wasn't flashback because it's in the future. So, you know, they, they like de-aged him in the future. But now these beauty work programs are used literally just to knock a few years off any actor. I don't know a huge amount about this. I know the, the main details, but I did post on my Instagram. If you want to know if beauty work has been done on any of the actors in the film, you have to look out for these three editing companies. There may be spelling mistakes here, but these are the three companies that do beauty work in Hollywood. 
I'll actually link to a, a video by Inform Overload that they included me in, where they talk about this beauty work in a lot more detail. Let's rename this video really quick to YouTube versus reality. Whilst real time filters exist, of course, there's gonna be a lot of editing you can do in post-production. Obviously in movies, but not even on that level, even just me sitting here in my house with a camera and a laptop, I can have access to some programs and some plugins that can knock a few years off me, that can make my skin look better. Not quite movie level, but enough, enough to trick you. Beauty Box is a Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere Pro plugin that allows you to retouch the skin in the editing stage. And that's what you saw at the beginning of this video. One side, I had the Beauty Box filter on me and the other side is just sat here with the natural lighting. This program can smooth out your skin. It can change your undertones, it can change the high highlights, it can smooth out wrinkles, it can change the contrast in your face, all in real time whilst you're moving. This basically creates a mask of your face, maps it all out, and you can make the changes as subtle or as obvious as you like. It took me a while to kind of work out how to use this, and I do still think it's kind of got that like face tune blur to it that doesn't look quite real, and I think a lot of people can pick up on. But this program is so popular. It's insanely popular. In fact, it's been out for quite a few years and it's had quite a few upgrades and updates since its release. And I have to be honest, looking at some people's videos, I think this is something a lot of people do, a lot of YouTubers do, and especially Instagram like beauty influencers, the skincare gurus over on Instagram who like to do those short, quick skincare routines. And according to Beauty Box's own promotional video, their program is used by the E! Network and used in a lot of reality TV programs. You know, like the Kardashian. Okay, back to Instagram. I was sent this picture a lot. Ever since doing these videos, I get so many like before and after pictures um, DM to me. Again, this picture is from the Instagram profile Beauty False, which I actually follow myself. And I wasn't gonna feature this because it's clearly just surgery and fillers. It's an old picture next to a newer picture, but there is of course some Photoshop going on. This is Nita Kazmina. I'm not sure, I don't know who she is or what she does. I guess she's a model. There's a lot of like nose pinching going on, a lot of refining the jawline. You can see in a lot of her selfies that her hair kind of swoops in here, which is a sign that the jawline's been retouched. A lot of the less professional retouching things in Facetune as well, like the eye details, you know, the horrible like whitening of the eye and the crisp sharp detail of the pupil. But to me, the real thing here is contouring. She is contoured all the time with makeup, but I do know contouring is possible on Facetune. And of course you can change the amount of light and shadows in Photoshop if you wanna go that step further, which I believe she does looking at her pictures, to really make that face look more chiseled. I've discussed lighting before and lighting really is a big deal when it comes to photography and of course video. When I used to assist in studios and um, back in university where you'd be prepping for your own shoots, you could spend hours on the lighting. For me, it was the, the bit that really took up the bulk of the shoot. Lighting can change everything. It has the ability to even make your model look flawless or show every single bit of texture on the skin. But I think I want to create a whole video about this and do everything from um, the use of ring lights on Instagram and YouTube to full studio setups and kind of show you how influencers are using lighting to add this kind of like just perfect layer of light over them. Let me know if that's interesting or not. And as always, please discuss in the comments below. But that is it from me now, guys. I will see you next time.